125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Savannah, Devon, or Ceci, as charged in count 1, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Hold on, hold on one second. You have to add, add that it's the charge of manslaughter in the second degree. Find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree in violation of section 125.15. In violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Rachel K. Cavosi as charged in count 2, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Matthew William Coons, as charged in count 3, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of subsection 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Patrick K. Cushing, as charged in count 4, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Mary E. Dyson, as charged in count 5, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Robert J. Dyson, as charged in count 6, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Amanda D. Halsey, as charged in count 7, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of subsection or section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Brian Gregory Huff, as charged in count 8, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Abigail M. Jackson, as charged in count 9, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Adam Jackson, as charged in count 10, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Allison A. King, as charged in count 11, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Scott Lisinikia, as charged in count 12, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Aaron R. McGowan, as charged in count 13, listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree, in violation of section 125.15, subsection 1 of the penal law, with regard to Shane McGowan, as charged in count 14, listed on the verdict sheet, 
Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree in violation of section 125.15 subsection 1 of the penal law with regard to Amanda Rose Rivenberg as charged in count 15 listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree in violation of section 125.15 subsection 1 of the penal law with regard to Joseph James Joseph Schnur as charged in count 16 listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree in violation of section 125.15 subsection 1 of the penal law with regard to Amy L. Steenberg as charged in count 17 listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree in violation of section 125.15 subsection 1 of the penal law with regard to Axel J. Steenberg as charged in count 18 listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree in violation of section 125.15 subsection 1 of the penal law with regard to Richard N. Steenberg Jr. as charged in count 19 listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. With respect to the crime of manslaughter in the second degree in violation of section 125.15 subsection 1 of the penal law with regard to Michael Christopher Ukai as charged in count 20 listed on the verdict sheet, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Person, person please be seated. Members of the jury, listen to your verdict as it stands recorded. You say through your foreperson that you define that you find the defendant guilty of the crime of manslaughter in the second degree as charged in counts 1 through 20 listed on the verdict sheet. Now collectively, is that your verdict? Yes. yes. The private party wish to have the jury poll. Okay, Mr. Kimmel? No. Yes, please. Okay, you may do so. Okay, I'm going to set a sentencing date.
Good afternoon. Uh, we come with you to you with some breaking news. A verdict now reached in the Skahari limo trial. You just heard it live right here. Naman Hussein found guilty on 20 counts of manslaughter. He will, we're just learning from Judge Peter Lynch just now when he will be sentenced. But we have people in the courtroom. Dan Levy is in the courtroom. Stella Porter is in the courtroom. We have a producer in the courtroom as well. They'll be out momentarily to let us know when sentencing date is. But Naman Hussein found guilty of all 20 counts of manslaughter and will be sentenced uh, at a date uh, to be determined uh, to a maximum of 5 to 15 years in prison. That's the maximum sentence he could face. He could face as little as probation, right. but however, that's unlikely given the circumstances that led us here, the circumstances that led us to a We're trial. We're just hearing a sentencing date has been set for May 31st. That news just coming in from inside the courtroom at 9.30 in the morning. Um, a very emotional scene inside that courtroom. There were screams as soon as the first count of guilty was announced. Yeah, from the family members of victims, uh, let out an audible sigh, and also a scream from the uh, significant other of Naman Hussein, who you're seeing here. We're hearing that the uh, family of Naman Hussein, his girlfriend, as well as the brother, excused themselves for a short time, um, emotional as well, leaving the courtroom. Um, the families of the victims, of course, continued to express intense emotion as all 20 names were read, guilty on all 20 counts. Again, sentencing set now for May 31st. Naman Hussein very emotional. His brother, at last check, according to our team inside, has been consoling him, trying to um, just share some words to comfort him during this life-changing moment for yeah, him. Yeah, the families of victims certainly uh, feeling gratified, I would guess, uh, this afternoon, and we hope to hear from them as they leave the courtroom, but uh, this is not a place that they ever wanted to be, certainly, but uh, they were able to hear all 20 counts read. Now, under the law, there's no difference between one count right. and 20 count, because the maximum sentence is not a stackable or consecutive sentence which will be allowed, because under the law, it's viewed as one crime and one crime only, but they get some satisfaction, I'm guessing, by hearing the jury foreperson say guilty to each of the 20 counts associated with each of those 20 names of victims. Naman Hussein um, being placed in handcuffs right now. A live look at what is going on inside the courtroom on your screen right now. Uh, being placed in handcuffs to be led away. Four and a half years after this horrific crash, the limousine crash just a couple of miles away from where we are standing right now that took the lives of those 20 people. The family members have been very quiet throughout this trial, not wanting to speak, saying as soon as there is a resolution, we will speak, and we're hoping to speak with them. Four and a half years since that day, that Saturday afternoon, October 6, 2018, and now someone is being held criminally responsible. Defense attorney Lee Kinlan telling us and telling the jury that there was a rush to arrest. Naman Hussein was arrested four days after the crash, and he was urging the jury not to have a rush to judgment. That's Judge Peter Lynch, who presided over this case, a Supreme Court justice based in Albany, but has uh, he came to this case after Schoharie County Court Judge George Bartlett retired. We have a crew inside that will be joining us shortly, but just looking at the uh, the feed on, on the monitor just right below us here, we're watching what's going on inside that courtroom right now, and we're putting that up for you live right now as the judge is now uh, standing up and leaving the bench. So, um, But again, sentencing set for May 31st, 9.30 in the morning. Um, Naman Hussein found guilty of, of 20 counts of manslaughter, and these families have been waiting for four and a half years for something like this to happen. The largest highway crash, the most uh, deadly, the deadliest highway crash uh, in the United States in more than a decade, and now there is a, a measure of justice for these uh, 20 families who lost uh, someone on that day. A large focus of this trial was on Mavis, and Dan Levy broke that news this morning that a state police Police have been instructed by the Saratoga County DA to turn over any pieces of investigation related to Mavis and the possible involvement that Mavis Discount Tire had in that crash. So things are not done no. with this investigation. There's still more to come. Yeah, and, and perhaps there'll be uh, this, this, perhaps the civil cases will move forward as well. But uh, the Mavis aspect was pushed by the defense. Uh, this week and the, the week before, saying that uh, it's Mavis who has some criminal responsibility here for not performing the work that Naman Hussein paid. But apparently, Dan Levy coming out of the courtroom now as well. Uh, but uh, we're, we're 
we have to assume that uh, Mavis, uh, that, that if there is an investigation, that, that Mavis will respond vigorously to those accusations as well. Uh, Dan Levy has been in the courtroom listening in as the verdict came in, and uh, Dan, we heard the uh, scream, if you will, that was let out when the jury foreperson announced guilty. Just such a release of pent-up emotion, if we can... <clears throat> Imagine what it's been like for these families for the last four and a half years to, to to deal with this. And I should also add that as the jurors were dismissed and left the courtroom, they stood up and gave them a round of applause. I've never seen anything like that before in a court case. Also sitting in front of me was uh, Norman Hussein's brother and girlfriend. They were, uh, you know, very emotional as you might imagine. In tears, we know that manslaughter carries a maximum penalty of 15 years, and. Uh, Everybody is beginning to uh, grasp the reality of what just happened. Yeah, Naman Hussein's significant other, his girlfriend, I'm not sure if his girlfriend or fiance, but... Uh, Melissa went, Bell. Yeah, she, she actually got up, ran away, and, and was, was in tears as the verdict came in. Were you able to see, did you have a good vantage point on Naman Hussein? Was there a reaction there, Dan? And I was sitting right behind Norman. His back was to me. Lee Kinlan's back was to me. So I couldn't see any facial reactions. Um, uh, but I, I know uh, Lee had his arm around Norman's uh, shoulder. He was speaking to him the whole time. I would imagine trying to calm him down, trying to uh, explain that there, there, there's more to this. There will be appeals. There will be appeals, yeah. And we know that the uh, the sentencing date is May 31st, and we also know that uh, Judge Lynch said uh, the circumstances here have changed entirely. The landscape has changed. Therefore, I am revoking uh, your, your status, and you will go right to jail. And he was. He was let out of the courtroom in handcuffs. Yeah. What a change, Dan, from a year ago when that plea deal was on the table and it looked like everything had all but been buttoned up. And then suddenly Judge Lynch, the judge presiding over this trial, saying no, found a hole in it and said, I, I'm rejecting this. And now here we are, almost a year later, with a guilty verdict in this Yeah, case. it was the end of last August when uh, everyone gathered in that courtroom and Judge Lynch was there. And it was such a shock, such a surprise to everyone at the time. He said, this plea deal is unacceptable to me. He ripped it up. Of course, we know that Lee Kinlan challenged that decision in court. He lost at the appellate division. And that's what led us to this trial this week. And and so, if not for the retirement of the original judge, uh, Bartlett, uh, we wouldn't have reached this day. Yeah, that original plea deal called for five years probation for Naman Hussein and 1,000 hours of community service. And that were, there was a year of interim probation, at which time Naman Hussein served roughly 600 hours of community service. And that was one of the arguments made by Lee Kinlan that, hey, he's already served part of this sentence. You can't revoke it. But he could, in fact, revoke it. He did revoke it, and the appellate division, third department, ruled that he had every right to. They did indeed. One wonders if that decision from the appellate division um, might have been different if he had served out all 1,000 hours, if he had completed the, the penalty uh, for that original plea deal. This has been such um, an unpredictable case in terms of uh, the length of the, of the trial. First set to be four to six Six weeks, 130 plus witnesses on the list. It ended up being six days. 24 witnesses count, uh, called in total. And now, after five hours of deliberations today, about an hour and a half yesterday, we have a verdict of guilty on all 20 counts. Initially, you're right, Sabrina. Susan Mallory thought she was going to have 130 witnesses. She felt she had enough evidence to convict. After 24, it turns out she was right. And we have some family members who are We're now coming out. We're going to go over and chat with him. Okay, see if yeah. we can so he got his live. So okay. uh, we have some family members of victims hugging out in front of the Saratoga County Courthouse now. Uh, and we have Dan Levy. Uh, Dan Levy can uh, talk to those people live now. I think we'll let him know that he has the ability to talk to them uh, while we are on the air. But uh, several family members gathering now in front of the courthouse hugging. Hugging. Um, there are a lot of tears, and we're going to uh, bring the images for, of that for you live. I was probably up there for a great time, I would imagine. You guys did a lot of work. You guys advocated for change. You guys advocated for your voices to be heard in this. To see this day finally come up, what does this mean to you guys after four and a half years? I don't know, it's kind of a relief, you know? I mean, it's, I feel bad. I felt bad for his girlfriend. <laughs> I know it's wrong. It's really wrong, but it's, it's, I felt bad. Can, can you ask Josh to also talk to me? Yeah. Anything that he's been saying, I, I don't have. So he, uh, Mark hasn't been able to hear it. Ready, ready, ready.
And we are live outside Saratoga County Courthouse where the verdict came in about uh, 15 right. minutes ago that Nauman Hussein guilty of 20 counts of manslaughter. Yes, here outside the Scary County Courthouse where the uh, trial has lasted a, a total of about two weeks if you factor in jury selection. Um, behind us right now, family members are speaking with the media for the very first time since all of this um, started here with the jury selection process, the testimony in this trial. The family members have been here every step of the way and were uh, very emotional hearing the words guilty today and those emotions continue to linger on. Right An now. audible sigh of relief went across the courtroom and I think we're able to listen in as Dan Levy is, is interviewing some of the family members. Here. Praise God, it's finally been done. I would imagine Judge Lynch might be considered a, a hero to you. Yeah. If not for him ripping up that initial plea bargain, this would not have That's happened. Right. Exactly. I'm very thankful for Judge Lynch. When my husband called and told me that the probation had been overturned, I pulled over, my arms went up in the air. Praise God! I was so happy. I was so happy. You have no clue what we've gone through. None. Talk about the Mavis testimony last week. Are you Concern that Why haven't they been indicted? That's my question. Where's Mavis and all of this? Saratoga County District Attorney Karen Hagan told me this morning that she has requested their investigative documents regarding Mavis. Good. I'm glad to hear that. It's about time. They should have been brought to the table right from the get-go, just as Hussein was. Any entity involved that was part of the cause, sorry, of the crash should be brought to the table. And Do you feel like Mavis. it's just as incomplete until Mavis is held accountable? Justice is incomplete. What was partial justice was served today. And what, what was it like just experiencing the trial sitting through? Very difficult emotionally. I, did, I couldn't, I could not see how he would get away with nothing. I thought if, if anything else it would be the the lesser charge, but when it came through as the manslaughter and the second degree, it's like, oh my gosh. What a powerful moment, you know, as the families reacted to the very, verdict being read, very. And, uh, uh, to him being remanded to the Schoharie County Sheriff's Office. I mean, tell me what was going through your head emotionally, you know, during this time. Honestly, I was saddened for him. I really was. As much as I want justice for my son, I still felt badly for him. And Coming I to you live, uh, once again, you were just listening to um, Ms. Ashton speaking uh, regarding the reaction to this verdict. And join us, joining us here right now, um, Mr. and Mrs. Cushing, and I know, Kevin, we've been speaking with you um, throughout the years. And this moment right now, just describe how you're feeling. It's exhilarating. I mean, it's we had relatively low expectations because this four and a half years has been filled with disappointment. But today, we have a reason to be really appreciative of the, actually the judge. I, I can't thank the judge enough for really redoing the plea and having a court uh, trial. And we got a conviction to a charge that we thought was appropriate. And he's convicted. So we couldn't be more pleased about that. Can you compare your feelings when you arrived at this courthouse on that day in August of last year, thinking that he was going to be sentenced to probation and community service? Compare that to today. It was an empty feeling. There was anger, frustration, and probably more feelings I can't even put my, my mind around right now. Today we had... Uh, expectations not necessarily low but we've after four and a half years we don't really have high expectations normally as it turns out we're we're just very very happy with the court's decision and the jurors decision really appreciate the work they put into it I know this was a difficult case for everyone involved we've been speaking um, throughout this week um, a little bit here and there and you had mentioned how nervous you have felt um, just asking people to pray and here we are now, and this is uh, a guilty verdict, and is it a little sense of closure for you? Is it providing any, any feeling of comfort? There's no closure. I mean, it's still, Patrick, this is part of our daily lives. But, I mean, the court case is over. I guess that's closed. But closure as far as our grief, that's ongoing and forever, and that's okay. I mean, we don't want to forget.
Patrick in any way, shape, form, or manner, or any of the other family members. We've become a, you know, a different kind of family. And uh, every, every child has a story, and we want that story to be told to the next generation. And we will do that during holidays and birthdays and, and family get-togethers. We've said throughout that this is a fraternity, a sorority that none of you wanted to be a part of. Mrs. Christian, did your thoughts immediately go to Patrick? <laughs> yeah, they did. I um, was shaking and crying at the same time and just was just... It was the right, it was the right decision, and I felt that way down to my toes. So. Were you among those who let out a sigh? Where there was an audible sigh in the courtroom. Were you, were you among those? No, I was not. No. I was holding everybody's hand around me so tightly, and I um, couldn't stop crying, basically. And not just for Patrick, but as every name was read. Yeah. What would you say, Mr. Cushing, what would you say to Naman Hussein? You'll be given an opportunity on May 31st, I would guess, but do you know what you want to say, or have you thought about it? Actually, I've kind of thought about the fact that, you know, a $2,000 break job kind of changed a lot of people's lives. It took the lives of 20 good people and destroyed his. Do the right thing. I mean, it's, that's what I, th I almost feel sorry for him. Really? almost feel so I, I no one likes to see somebody's life destroyed and I don't want to feel that way I mean I'm certainly don't I'm certainly glad that he was convicted and I believe he's getting a punishment that he deserves but I take no joy in that what are the next steps for, for you now I mean, this has been such a focal point for the past couple of weeks I don't think we've gotten that far we, yeah we, we, we are just reeling, I guess is the word, and just trying to um, um, find, find what we're going to do in the next 30 seconds. We're just very... True enough. Yeah. Does, does the past four and a half years feel like a, like a haze? Is it? No, it's, there's all kinds of different things that happened over those four and a half years that are kind of like markers for us. Um, generally speaking, they turned out not to be the greatest markers in the world. But um, you know, things can change, and they did today. We did get the le limo legislation passed. Yes, you did. Absolutely. Yeah, at the state level and the federal level. And so that was something that we could really hold on to in the course of the last four and a half years. That was very productive and hopefully saved other people's lives. But what a tremendous legacy for Patrick yeah, and all the Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. And and it is nice to see some first. smiles on your faces. We yeah. appreciate you yeah. taking a few moments to speak with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Patrick's memory. It. Thank you. Thank you. You were just hearing from Mr. and Mrs. Cushing, uh, the parents of Patrick Cushing, who uh, sadly passed away in the East Schoharie limo crash four and a half years ago. Um, Kevin Cushing has been so open with us over the years, talking about all of the feelings he's had along the ways. And for now, for this moment, for him to share that with us, we really do thank him. Describing the roller coaster of emotions from that day back in August when they arrived here, thinking that it would only be a probation and community service sentence, to now today, a higher point for the family, but not taking a great deal right. of satisfaction in it. And saying he feels sorry. Sorry for him, yeah, to some sense. extent, yeah. And we have Stella Porter here standing by, who is inside the courtroom. Stella. Um, you were texting us minute by minute updates as everything was happening inside the courtroom. Describe the feeling. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to another live picture right now. Let's listen. Make sure that that you guys spend time with the families because it's really about their day today. After the 24 witnesses took the stand, I know there were a lot more. Did you have a good idea that that was enough to convict? The issue was. We've always agreed on the facts. Initially, the defense was going to uh, object to the chain of custody. So the witnesses that we did not call were chain of custody witnesses. And once we had subpoenaed every person who took the evidence off the shelf and put it on, we were ready. And they knew we were ready. And nine out of 10 times, they do stipulate in the end. But let's celebrate for the family today. Do Mavis employees bear any responsibility for the death of those people? At this point, I think today we're going to celebrate for the families. We have not seen the sunshine. My team and I have not seen the sunshine. And so today is about the families, and we're going to just enjoy the day. So thank you very much, everyone. Congratulations. Yeah. Greg, what did this turn on? What, did, what do you feel this conviction turned on? What was one thing that this turned on? 
You were just listening to the Schoharie County District Attorney give her reaction, her thoughts after the guilty verdict on all 20 counts in the uh, manslaughter trial of Nauman Hussein. Stella Porter is here right now um, talking about the feeling inside the courtroom. You were there as each count was read. You were giving us um, updates literally every second. Describe what was going on inside. Really, really emotional, Sabrina. They read each count with each name uh, of manslaughter, guilty, 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 20 times over for each family that was represented in the courtroom. And it, it was interesting to watch the judge's demeanor change from before that verdict when Naman Hussein obviously has a presumption of innocence to then he said afterwards that landscape is changed. Pause right there, Stella. I apologize. The defense attorney, Lee Kinlan, is speaking right now. Let's listen in. Um, I'm heartbroken. You know, I over the course of the past four and a half years, I've developed a relationship, either a close personal relationship with my client, his family, his extended family overseas. But I've also existed in an outer, outer layer with all the victims' families, and um, I really now at the end of this chapter of the case, I'm just heartbroken for everybody involved. Uh, so something some of those family members said to us is that today provides in incomplete justice, you know, calling for Mavis to have some accountability as well. That's something you've echoed a lot throughout the trial, so your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's always difficult to find a silver lining on, uh, on a great cloud of having my client convicted, but if we were able in any way to help move that discussion forward, um, certainly Nauman is happy about that. And, you know, you guys all saw I sat with him the entire day in the back, and uh, he was reading some of the some of the disclosures that Saratoga County DA is going to start to investigate Mavis. He's really happy about that. Um, obviously, he's disappointed. His family's devastated about the conviction. I talked to his dad upstairs for a couple of minutes. But um, you know, again, uh, this is just a chapter, um, and this story is yet to be written in, what are in your total. Next steps? So now I have to go back and do a bail application pending appeal. Um, you know, Nauman has made every court appearance. He's through COVID. He went to probation every week. Um, so I'm a little disappointed the judge decided to lock him up today, uh, but not surprised. So bail application pending appeal, and then obviously sentencing in two weeks. So you do you do plan to appeal, and what is the basis oh, yeah. of that? Well. I respectfully disagree with the court's rulings on the uh, instructions they read to the jury. Uh, I disagree uh, with the judge's decision not to dismiss the case. I had a case that was almost on point uh, down to the last fact, and uh, the judge did not agree with me, but of course, that's his providence because he's the judge. Lee, do you feel that the strong community sentiment to find someone accountable for those 20 deaths worked against your client? Yes. Um, but I also trust the jury system, so I, I hope and I have to believe that the jury was able to set that aside. But, uh, you know, we're also a bunch of human beings. So, uh, you know, I'm still digesting what happened, but, um, yeah. I don't know. What did, you the father, what did the father say? Where is he? Uh, the dad is overseas, and the dad mostly sobbed. Um, is it Pakistan? Where is he? As far as I know, yes. But uh, honestly, whenever I talk to the dad, I don't ask him. Uh, if so. the Nauman was reading some of the disclosures about the Saratoga County yeah. DA, looking into those New York State Police reports about Mavis, what can you tell us about that so far? Look, I've known Karen Hagen and her staff uh, forever and ever. And uh, that's a good, strong, uh, disciplined, serious group of DAs. Um, so uh, if anybody could get that job done, I believe in, in Karen Hagen and her staff. The judge shut down your request for a lesser misdemeanor yeah. count. Uh, do you think that worked against your guy? Do you think maybe the jurors would have gone for something less severe? Well, and the, the idea was is that if they were going to find recklessness, um, then they could go to reckless endangerment. Again, I disagree with the fact the judge didn't include the lesser included. That's probably going to be a, a point in our appeal, but uh, you know that appeal has yet to be written. So. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Thank Everybody you. good? Thank you. All right, folks. Thank you again, Ready?
back here live outside the Scary County Courthouse right now. Jill Richardson Perez is nice enough to join us. She's the mom of Matthew Coons, who died on October 6, 2018. What are you feeling right now, Jill? Oh, I am, I am feeling a moment of disbelief. But accomplishment, we have waited a long, long time for this day. There was one point in time where we didn't think we'd ever see this day. There was a strong feeling among the parents and the wife of those that we lost four and a half years ago that there would never be justice. Now we've waited and we've watched and it's a whole different day. It's a new day. It's it's the ending of a period, but it's also the beginning of a period for us. You had mentioned that your plan is to go over to the memorial and then spend time in your son's room when you get home. Oh, yeah. There, there are a few parents that are going to the Apple Barrel right now, um, a small celebration, and then I am really looking forward to going home to my husband. He's been here on and off as he can. He owns a business and he can't be here every day. So I will be there with him, my youngest son. Um, and I want to spend some time with Matthew's things, his military things, um, his workout gear. I just, I am so happy we have gotten to this point. So happy for you. And you said when you, you go to the Apple Barrel Cafe, where the memorial is, the beautiful memorial with all the stones and the footprints of each of those who were lost, what will you do? I will do what I always do. I always go there and I stand, I go to his stone, he and Savannah. Savannah's his girlfriend and they were together in the limo. And I go and I step up and I put my footprints in his footprints. And it's, it brings me closer to him. Yeah. And it, he had big, tremendous, huge feet. And I just love well, to see him. He's a big guy, too. He's a big boy. Yeah. And I just love that, that connection. I look up at the sky and I thank God for the time I had with him here. Mm -hmm. And I tell him how much I miss him. Yeah. Well, um, just to see you smile and to see that, that happiness on your face is, is beautiful. And the connection that all of the families have formed, there's something so horrible, but you all have been there for each other inside that courtroom. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone has been there for one another. We text each other back and forth. If someone cannot be there, Amanda Rivenberg's mother was ill this morning and she texted me and she could not be there. And I know she wants to be there, especially today. So we're there for one another. We're there for Amanda. Always. Jill, thank you very much for speaking with us on this day uh, of joy, finally, of, on some level. And after congratulations so long. on the legacy of Matthew, because you have advocated on his behalf for greater safety uh, for limousines, and, and that's been successful. So. We have. Thank you, and thank you so much for being there for us today. Right, congratulations. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Jill Richardson Perez taking time out of her day now, and time out from a celebration as much as you can celebrate on, on this day. We thank you. Thank you very much. We will wrap up our coverage here for right now. We will see you with the very latest starting live at 4 from Schoher.